everybody, Marty Richards with Richland Center Tourism with our Why Do We Call It That episode for today. Uh, now this one, you know, we do take liberties with the Why Do We Call It That versus what we actually talk about. But a lot of those uh, around my age and maybe a little bit older do remember the twin uh, cinema screens here in Richland Center being called the Eskin Theater. And so the original name of the movie theater behind me was the Eskin Theater. And I have great memories, a lot of people in the area do. Uh, my first memory at the theater here was my sister taking me to see The Sound of Music in its original release. So that, that's a pretty cool deal for me. Now, let's get to the uh, topic of the matter, and that is, why did we call it the Eskin Theater? So first off, we need to really reach back to 1914 when Jacob and Sarah Eskin emigrated from Russia to the United States and came to Milwaukee first. In Milwaukee, so they came with nothing, literally the shirt on their back. Uh, they were a true rags riches story. They came with nothing, started as junk dealers in Milwaukee, eventually made their way into dealing furs and uh, made some money and then ventured west. They settled in Richland Center. And in Richland Center, they started a couple of different businesses, ultimately getting into the grocery store business. They held a grocery store on Main Street for a bit. But in uh, 1923, um, they purchased, at that time, what was known as the Orpheum Theater here in Richland Center. Well, as the 30s approached, that's when the movie houses really exploded in the United States. They kind of transitioned from your local and regional acts performing live to the movie theater. So in 1937, Jacob and Sarah Askin built the Askin Theater as it was known uh, behind me here. Um, Jacob at that point owned nine movie theaters. He had become kind of a little bit of a local mogul owning those movie theaters in Dodgeville, Boscobel, Viroqua. Uh, he had nine total and even purchased the Al Ringling Theater in Baraboo, which was quite the show place and still remains today as well. Now, the first movie that opened at the Askin was on March 4th of 1937. However, Sarah, wasting no time and seeing some opportunity here, filed for a divorce and that divorce was finalized on March 29th of the same year. Now, this is not to you know, cast dispersions on Sarah. Uh, the marriage was, by all accounts, pretty rough and her divorce was granted on the grounds of cruelty. So part of that divorce though was a settlement of $100,000 in property and part of that was the movie theater behind us. So Sarah had control of the Eskin Theater that bore their name here in Richland Center. The legend has it that Jacob Eskin agreed to that settlement thinking that Sarah would flounder and eventually fail and that then he could come back later, purchase the movie theater, pennies on the dollar and away he'd go and his uh, fiefdom was then put back together and he would feel whole. However, uh, the history tells us that Sarah asked, actually was very adept at running the movie house. Later on in 1951, she expanded her holdings by securing a lease, a lifetime lease on 20 acres of land east of Richland Center and that was for the purpose of what we now know as the Starlight 14 drive-in. So Sarah started that. It was really then known as the Highway 14 Drive-In, later on renamed the Starlight 14 Drive-In, which you hear us talk about quite a bit. In the 50s in Wisconsin, there were 79 drive-ins in Wisconsin. Uh, today we know there's, depending on who you talk to, there's either seven or eight operating drive-in movie theaters, and we have Sarah Eskin to thank for that. One little caveat, when she acquired that land, she wasn't able to purchase it. Um, the question was, the people that were uh, dealing with her on the land purchase or lease, they questioned if she'd be able to make it, and so they didn't want to just sell the land outright. They really questioned the viability of it, so they gave her a lifetime lease. Now that lifetime lease states that as long as it's being used for a movie theater, drive-in movie theater, it can continue to be uh, shared and moved on with different ownership, but when it ceases, to be used as a drive-in movie theater, that that land then goes back to the original owner's heirs and or assigns. So that's why we're, we're really thrilled uh, just in the last year or two that new ownership group uh, headed by Tony and Holly Johnson, Brent Montry came in, 
purchased the old Eskin Theater behind us and then also acquired the use of the Starlight 14 drive. Just another little caveat, feel free to check out many of those original movie houses that were built at the same time in Dodgeville, Boscobel, Viroqua still exist as well. The architecture stood up to the test of time and have done very well uh, in their own right, even today as entertainment centers. So for Richland Center Tourism, that's our Why Do We Call It That episode. I'm Marty Richards. Let's everybody have a great day.